What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, but we have something very, very special today, and that is we are finally doing an interview. I know we haven't done one in a long time, and uh, that's what the channel kind of started off on. Uh, we did interviews a lot. One of the first people to like really hardcore do interviews, and we've been slacking them. I know it's it's just really hard for me to do interviews nowadays. I would I would love to do interviews. Trust me, they are so fun. I love interacting with players and understanding why they're playing X Y Z cards. Maybe we'll jump back into them, but right now it's so difficult for me to like coordinate stuff. And then um, yeah, it's just it's just really hard, unfortunately. Like I love doing interviews. I I'm glad that a ton of people are doing them now. They used to not really exist until we started doing hardcore a lot of them and then now we, they're, they're everywhere and that's exciting that's good i love seeing that i love that people interview people all the time uh but guys here we go uh today we're interview isaiah williams um who got um second place in Dallas, for those who didn't know playing his straight zorak deck we kind of already covered this before it's very similar to mindless that we talked about on monday i uh, mean the one main difference is he plays a red card to Shuffle his opponent's hand deck, draw four cards, and then once you do this, you hex maniac them. It gets to the mirror. It's very good. You red card hex. They have five cards, and they're probably bad. And you're going to win there. Uh, of course, we have some great things like why the 3 1 split? Why the mind jack over the foul play one? Um, why is the four eggs needed and stuff like that? There's a lot of stuff here we talk about. Um, it's a really good interview. I like a lot. Isaiah is a fantastic player and uh, one of my good friends, and that's why we did the interview. I do apologize if you have asked to do an interview before and I've said no. Um, it just worked out perfectly. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do interviews. I don't know. Um, if they if it if this is a lot if this gets a lot of positive reviews, then I'll definitely highly consider them doing them instead of PTCGO videos. But as of right now, I think PTCGO videos are more what people want to see, unfortunately. Uh, but guys, today we are going to do an interview with Isaiah Williams. Let's see it today, and uh, let's start the video right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Um, first off, I know we haven't done player interviews in a long time, and there's going to be a ton of people who are going to be really mad because I get messages all the time. Can we do an interview? And I'm like, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm so busy. But I'll make an exception for this young man right here because he's the true champ. Uh, but sir, uh -oh. what's your name for people that you don't know? Uh, hi there, I'm uh, Isaiah Williams, or also known as Byron Williams. Um, yeah, and I'm a Pokemon player. <laughs> I'm a Pokemon player. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Isaiah just got second at Dallas. I don't know where you've been because we've literally been talking about this all week on the channel. So, yeah. Congratulations, sir, first of all. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, so first of all, let, let's get this out of the way. The thing I hate the most about this weekend, where people are like, oh, Isaiah, I've never heard of this kid before. Where is he? Like, I, he's never done good at Pokemon. I'm like, oh, my God, these people are <laughs> dumb. What are they talking about, sir? Um, is this your first regional championship? Uh, no, absolutely not my first <laughs> regionals. I've played lots of regionals. I've, uh, I've gotten top 16 twice in last year in Anaheim and in San Jose, okay. both in California. Uh and I got, I've had multiple top 32s, at least, like, last year, I think, like, three or four. This year, uh, I've only gotten one, and then dozens of top 64s, so, like, that's normally where I'm at when I go to tournaments, honestly, at top 64. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, how about um, bigger tournaments? Have you done well at any bigger tournaments for? Yeah, so, uh, my, my uh, biggest finish um, was in 2014. Uh, I, it was my first year as a master, and it was uh, I, the second tournament I went to that entire year, and I got top four at nationals, third place. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just so funny this weekend. People were like I don't I don't know who this Isaiah kid is. You know Riley though, he's done good this year. I'm like, oh my goodness, these people are making me so mad right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like my identity's gotten like lost in the community because like back then I had long hair so people don't recognize oh, okay, me. Okay, true. Yeah. And then and then also there's like this whole discrepancy with my name was it like because sometimes I put Isaiah Williams and sometimes I put Byron Williams and so people think they're different people <laughs> and like like on some of these like uh, player ladders the third party ones like Limitless TCG and stuff like my name is on there twice in different places. <laughs> I need to tell them that it's the same one. I'm the same person. That's like uh, that's like with Finnegan, like because you know, you know, his name's not Finnegan. Yeah, but it's yeah, like... it's Daniel like, <laughs> Finnegan Lynch. It's yeah, it's like we have the same dilemma. But yeah, I'm trying to clear that up. 
<laughs> Byron Williams and Isaiah Williams are the same people. You they heard. might be the same people. We don't know. <laughs> he might have a twin. Yeah, I'm like Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? Like, I just, like, empower myself. Turn into like, Isaiah Yu-Gi-Oh, Williams. what? Get out of yeah. here. <laughs> he could have been like, I'm like the Sosa brothers, you know, Sammy kind of exists, but he really doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> fair enough. I, that would have been better. <laughs> All right, guys, but uh, we know we, we just saw his list for a brief second, and that was the uh, the Zork. I don't know. look. Okay, first of all, what, what do you call Zork? Like, what do you call this kind of deck? Like, are you one of those guys say Lungzo, or like, how, how do you like describe the deck? We uh, the our group, my testing group, officially named it Breakfast. <laughs> okay, Breakfast. it makes sense because you play the four eggs. Four eggs, yep, and. There was, before when Zork first came out, there was, like, running joke that, like, Zork, like, and Rock, they called it, like, lunch and dinner. Because, like, Sam Chen did well with it, and, you know, he's Asian and, you know, racist stuff. But, so it's our variation, breakfast with eggs. Oh, my goodness. Just to be fair, that joke was made by Sam Chen himself, so. <laughs> oh, no, that, that does not surprise me at all. Like, I love Sam Chen, so it's, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's acceptable. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. um... I guess, okay, so first of all, let, let's say, how, how did you get to this list? Like, you know, was it the Ooh, night before? Was it, was it testing? Like, how, what's the story? How do we come to the Zork deck? Because I know, like, Zork Muck was big, and, like, the Zork Lycanroc, like you said, was big, but there wasn't really, like, a quad egg version that really wasn't big. Okay, yeah. So i I just like to start off uh, the story. It, it, it's a long process getting to this deck, honestly. We did a lot of testing. Um but it it definitely was like a group effort it it was me and jake morgan and brian ramirez and carter musgrove and rudy paris and uh just everyone in this certain group that i have and we all put so much work into it um and so what had happened was uh me and jake morgan were working on a glade deck it was glade with two gardevoirs five fairies three focus sash it was honestly nuts. It was super good. It, it's like, like I think if I would have played it, I definitely would have got like a top thirty-two or something. But <laughs> no, it was just top thirty-two. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it was, it was super strong. The problem was, like, so we made it beat Night March because, like, you can just you can use Octillery and Gallade to hex chain Night March and then just uh, keep throwing up Oricorios with your double stretcher. So it's super strong. The problem was we, so we thought like, oh, Gallade Focus Sash beats Zor. Just we don't even need to test the matchup. It beats Zor. And so we got around to finally, after we beat, every, we figured out how to beat everything, we decided to take the loss in trees, uh, but we, we beat everything else. We tested Zork, and we realized that if Zork just goes bench to Zora Hex turn one, with that deck you draw, you pass. They evolve to Zork, double trade via Seeker Hex. You draw, you pass, and then Zork just destroys you. It just, Zork is like, just way too oppressive with Hex Maniac. So... And that's a problem. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't take that loss of Zorak. And so we were trying to figure out how to make the deck beat it, and we never could. So we were like, we're just gonna play Zorak. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so that's when Brian Ramirez entered the picture. And he comes at us, he's like, guys, um, I just thought of this idea. Uh let, what if we played three eggs and no muck and Zorak? So then we can you can hex through pseudo and then bench the three eggs. And then you only need one Pokemon to get there with the KO. And I was like, why would we just not play four eggs then? <laughs> so you don't need the extra Pokemon. And he was like, okay. And so we tried it, and it was like doing extremely well. It was like beating everything, because Hexlock one-shots. Turns out, when you can't play abilities and you're getting hit for 210 every turn, you lose most of the time. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, And then uh, it, one of Brian's friends actually played it in a cup in Texas and got second. And so that was cool to see it actually perform in tournament. Um, and so then at that point, it was just more of like taking care of counts and stuff, like double compressor, double shaman, all that good stuff. Uh, and so it was Wednesday before the tournament. And um, that's when Jake Morgan had mentioned uh, adding peaking red card into the deck. And I was like, Jake, why would we play peaking red card? Uh, I was like, but you know what would be good? Red card. <laughs> and then we tested it. And it was nuts. So... Yeah, and that's how we got to the list. That was the evolution from Guardi Gallade to Zorak Red Card Hex. So, to Man, breakfast. We almost had the same route because I was playing Guardi with like a heavy Gallade, 
And I was like, all right, this is this is the deck this week, and we're playing it. And then I started testing a Zark, and I was like, I'm so losing. What's happening? Like, <laughs> what is going on? And then I saw whoever that was got second with that deck. And I'm like, all right, they're owned to something. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you saw Bobby get second. Yeah, yeah and I was like, so that's so cool. So I was like, starting talking to JW. I'm like, JW, why are we playing Muck in our deck still? Why don't we just play two hex? What exactly. does Muck do? Exactly. And he was like, Muck doesn't do anything. We just literally have Grimer in there, and we never want to evolve because we have eggs that so we need to propagate every exactly. single time. <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, all Muck does is it makes it. It, it, because if they don't play Muck, like, or they don't get out Muck, I think this version of Zork beats every other version of Zork, like, over and over. So easy. Yeah. If they get out Muck, I just think it makes it a fair game. As we saw in the finals. Yeah, oh, it yeah, was dude, like... Oh, we'll, we'll talk about the finals later. We'll talk about that. Yeah. That's, that's, that was still, man, intense. All right, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> going to day one, like, are you, you nervous? Are you excited? You said Wednesday, you, like, finalized the list. Did you make any changes, like, Friday night? Or were you, like, Wednesday nope. were, like, pretty solid? We're... We were solid, like, I after we made that red card change, I was, uh, or even before that, we had probably, like, we had tested, like, 60 or 70 games um, on PTCGO in total with the deck, and we had an 87% win rate. And so I was, like, pretty solid. We'll take it. <laughs> because, like, I, I, like, over such a large variation, like, over such a large number of games, I've never had a deck test with an 87% win rate, honestly, that I went to tournament. I'm normally at, like, 80 uh, or 78, somewhere around that. And so I was impressed by the 87. Uh, and, yeah, I kept it. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. All okay. right, so uh, Friday, Friday. Are we, are we nervous? I mean, you, so Wednesday, you had, like, what, three or four days to, like, test the deck out 100%. You know everything. Are you are you nervous going to round one, or are you, like, feeling super confident? So, uh, yeah, so um, I was talking to Jake Morgan because when, when we figured it out, like, it was, like, Thursday night. And we were, like, playing around with the deck. And I'm like, dude, I'm so excited to play around one. Like, because <laughs> we just knew. We knew the deck was nuts. And so we were like, I cannot wait to sit down against my round one opponent and be like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm like, I'm sorry about this. But it's like, honestly, though, but the, the funny thing about it, though, is I lost round one. <laughs> so I was, I sat down real confident. And then my opponent flipped over Trubbish and played parallel turn one, and then all my confidence left. <laughs> You're like, oh no, my run's already over. Everybody's playing guard exactly. parallel. What is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, so I got a little scared at that point. But I played against like, then I played against, against five Zorks in a row, and I felt a little better <laughs> when I was five and one. <laughs> All right, so okay, so you just said you're you're five one. Do you want to discuss like any of those matches, or, or like um, were they pretty vanilla? So uh, I guess like okay, I had that loss against Garb. Uh, it was very similar to the list I played against in top eight. Uh, I actually lost to David Cooper. I I don't know if any of you guys know him, but um, I don't think he day tutored anything. Was but, it like uh, Drampa Garb or like the? It was Drump. It was Drampa okay, Garb. Okay, with I know like Necrozma Trump or something like that. Yeah, it was very similar to the list that Jimmy and uh, Igor and Brian uh, and Brad played. Okay. Uh, and so I lost that round one. Uh, round two, I played against a Vespaquin Zorark, uh, and I don't. I actually I thought I had lost, but then I I top decked in and I played it and he dead drew and I won. So <laughs> I'll take it. Um, and so that was actually a really close match. Um, uh, and games three, four, five, they were against all Glissa Pubs work. And it, they were easy, easy to, uh, easy to. <laughs> it's so, it's so easy. It was, it was like, it was like six, oh, four, oh, and prizes every game. And no, I never got, my opponent never took more than two prizes That's in so all of those rounds. Uh, every time I sat down and there's a win, yeah. I was like, ah, we're, we won. Like, <laughs> exactly. I know. I loved it. When my opponent flipped over. When they flipped over Zora, I was like, cool, cool. They flipped over Wimpod, I was like, nice. This is a win. <laughs> They're never one-shotting me. I'm going to win this game. I got a Skyfield. They don't have Skyfield unless you're Jose. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then I I guess my, like, streak stopped when I played against uh, Charlie Lockyer. That's just how you pronounce his last name, I think. Um, and he was playing Wales, and it, we were both 5-1. Uh, and... One. and I had actually uh, tested some a few Wales games 
I uh, I played a game of Wales against John Kettler by on random on ladder, and he messaged me after, and we talked about it like two days before the tournament. But like, uh, it was super close game. Uh, I was winning, and then his computer disconnected. Like, I think I would have had it, but his computer disconnected. <laughs> Maybe he says otherwise. But I was pretty confident about like because I felt like red card gets this uh, Skyfield to bump stadium kind of crushed Wales, uh, but. It turns out when, like, you know, when your opponent gets just a little bit of luck, uh, and not that Charlie only won because of luck. He beat me because he's he just he's really good with the deck. He's, and he's a good Zerka, yeah, Zerka, like, when you use Zerka Tree correctly, like Charlie did, and, you know, you don't have the worst of draws, you can easily get out of Getz's red card, Skyfield. And so I think that's actually, like, favored for Wales uh, for the deck. Um, I think maybe if he played like a bundle beat, then things would be different. But yeah, yeah, we don't have that. So Who needs I'm glad that? I didn't play we'll against. Just take the loss. We'll just take the one yeah, loss. yeah, I'll take the one loss. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't run into any more. <laughs> <laughs> and so what? You're um, like five two at that point. Yeah, so I'm five two. Uh, oh, and then the yeah, next the next two. The next uh, the next round was against Zorik Magnuson, and I just played Hex, and they lost. They passed. And I won. <laughs> And game, round three, I actually, uh, it was extremely, it was crazy. My win in it, I'm not round three, but my, round nine. my lo- round nine, I played against a mirror. It was four eggs mirror. I was like, <laughs> whoa, I, I did not expect this to happen. Uh-huh. And it was Simon the Road. So I was like, I'm in for a good match. And it was, in fact, a good match. Uh, we went to um, turn three of time when I won. Uh, I won on turn three of time, and he, uh, what had happened, he plays Calrus for, like, 12, I think, and he needs to hit enough bench, he needs to hit four bench Pokemon, um, a choice band, and a DCE, and he plays Calrus for 12, he benches four Pokemon, like, this is for a win if he hits it, benches, no, he benches four Pokemon, right, attaches the DCE, I'm like, I'm done. Because he's got two puzzles and a choice left in deck. I'm like, I'm done. And then he hits me for... Eh, no, no. He Yeah, he attaches the DC, benches the four Pokemon, hits me for 180. I'm like, I can't believe I just survived a, a call risk <laughs> for And I had I had game in hand. So I won. Uh, I won that next turn. But at the, he showed me the four cards left in his deck. It was... The next card was the second puzzle. He had the first one in his hand. And then the card after that was choice ban. And I, I, so I... Totally luck sack that win. Hey, well, um, it's your day, it's your day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. Exactly. <laughs> now, in that matchup, did the was the red card like really did it help you a lot? Like did you use the red card hex play um, a lot? So honestly, uh I didn't play red card a whole whole bunch day one. Uh like I just couldn't get to it. Like it just wasn't Either I would just be, like, crushing my opponent, like, against the Ghost Spots or matchups, and I, I wouldn't want to red card them because it'd give them more more cards. Yeah. Or, or different cards, right? And I know they're, like, draw passing, so I'm not going to red card them. Or else I'd play, like, a super good game, uh, like, a super close game, like, against Simon um, or against the Garb, where, like, I couldn't afford to computer search for it or I couldn't, like, ch- trade into it because I was getting hexed back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, day two is really when it shined, I think, for me. Okay. So, uh, day one, you in 7-2, like, right there, like, 21 points were in there. <laughs> what, uh, do you remember what seed you were at? 31st, I think. Ooh. 31st. Yeah, so you got, you got a bit of a climb there, 31st to, to, yeah. eight, to top eight. Wow, yeah, yeah, for That's... sure. But, uh, like, after finishing, like, your last round, you know, you made day two, like, so what goes through your head? Are you like pumped? Are you just tired? Like what's what's happening? Uh, yeah, I, I was both. I was tired and pumped because uh, I stayed. I did not get much sleep the night before, uh, but that's okay. Um, I was just really excited. Uh, I knew like I pretty much uh, I looked on uh, on the forums to see what decks were being played for day two. The uh, forums, the forums, or the Facebook groups. Whoa, I mean, whoa. yeah, at the forum. <laughs> I went yeah. to the, I went to I'm the. Stuck. <laughs> I went to I'm the hate trainer, gym, hate trainer forums real quick and saw. Yeah, I, I, I went to Pokey Gym and clicked on the regional stuff. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, we've been in this game too long. But kids don't know about that. <laughs> uh, but 
But yeah, I, I went to Facebook actually, and I looked, and I saw a lot of Zorak. I was pretty happy about that. Um, and then I saw those Garb parallel decks, and I was pretty nervous about that. But so I pretty much knew, and I was glad to see only one whale. So I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, and so I was like, I knew that you know, if I run into Zorak tomorrow, I'll do well. If I don't, I won't. So, uh, yeah. So that's how I was feeling. I was kind of excited to see what I play against. Yeah. Um, I was trying yeah. to like. So what? There's 38 spots. Yeah. I'd see at least like what, at least 28 or probably a Zorak, if not more, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a close. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. So like eight decks with Zorak in them. Yeah. So yeah. Something like that. Such such a dumb card. Zork's such a dumb card. <laughs> there's also like there's also two like Stoutland Raichus, I think. So. Oh yeah, there was two Stoutland like, Raichus. There was uh, Mahone's like fighting thing, which is probably really bad yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a Night March, which I don't think is that bad for you. I it's don't know. pretty even, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like whale. There's the one whale. Oh, there's, there's the one Archie Stoys as well. Oh, Archie Stoys, yeah. yeah. And then the, and then the Garb uh, Drompa decks. Yeah. There's like. A few of those. Yeah. So there you go, five, six, seven. I don't know, eight or nine. Yeah. So yeah. But everything else is just like just Zark everywhere. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, so uh, I guess going to round ten. Who do you get paired against? Do you remember? Uh, oh, what was his name? I, I his name's slipping me. But I played him at Memphis, and he beat me for my winning in in round eight. He was oh. playing Ninja. No, he didn't beat me, but we tied. Yeah. So yeah. I went to I went to six one one, and then lost my last round. He was playing Ninja then. But uh, he was playing uh, Zorak uh, in round 10. And I was like, cool, first round Zorak. And uh, I uh, 2 0 him. Um, it, it did go to time, but I got the 2 0 mm -hmm. uh, on the last turn of game two. Um, and then after that was three more Zoraks. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Yeah, so <laughs> I started off. Day two has four zero, and the twelve two at that point. Yeah, twelve two. Eleven two. Twelve. No, eleven two. Okay, right, right. And everyone was saying that thirty five was safe. Uh, so eleven two is thirty three, and two rounds left. So I, I was like four zero. ID into top eight. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, now when you ID twice, did you know what your opponent was playing, or were you just random? Like, all right, look, do you want to ID? And I, they're like, I I knew because uh, they were sitting next to me in the rounds before. It was um, Kid. Wait, yeah, Kid, I believe. Yeah, Kid Stark. I I uh, ID'd him in round five, and then I ID'd Riley in round six. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, so. it's it's funny because Riley was like, "Oh yeah, I want him in cut too." That's I think that's what he yeah. said. <laughs> we were probably both like, "Yeah, you go to cut, let's do it." <laughs> both like, "Yeah, I can take this matchup. It's an easy win," <laughs> knowing that you're pretty much playing the same deck. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. All right, so you, you get the you get your top eight posting. Uh, what, what rank were you? Or do you know? What uh, rank third. Third. Ooh, what was the second. bubble? Was it like twenty twenty four? Thirty four. 34, yeah, uh, or 24. Mahone, Mahone whiffed on 34, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, I wonder, if, like, if Mahone, like, would he, like, won the whole thing? I wonder how, like... That I'll, I'll be goes. honest with you. I think that, like, Riley and my list would really destroy that deck. Oh, like, no, I, I, I I would agree with you. Like, I... Because, like, Hex is too, is really strong, and you can <laughs> one-shot the, uh... Like, they, they, okay, so they go, like... Did he play, uh, did he play Widelands? No, he did not. Okay, well, yeah, so they can take, like, you know, knockout turn one, and, like, kill Azora, uh, and then, like, 30 somewhere. Yeah. And, like, I feel like the deck's just, like, all right, cool, Zorg, 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 trade, 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 <laughs> Skyfield, bench, hex, knockout, and then they're just, like, oh, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> I guess I'll hit for 60 this turn. Yeah, like, <laughs> You're like strong hit for a hundred. You're like, all right, cool hex knockout. And like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I do agree because like in round six or seven, I played against like this like fighting deck. It was like even wide lands. He was taking double knockouts on Azoras. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, knockout. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. You know, Mahon's a great player. Oh, yeah, so he's fantastic. maybe so who, who, who would have known? But. Yeah. Like I, I didn't, I didn't doubt the power of uh, Zorak after I watched, cause I was in, uh, it was me, uh, the guy I played in top four, and um, 
yeah, Jimmy Taylor and uh, and then Riley, and we were all sitting on the same side. And on the opposite of us was uh, Brad, Igor, and Jimmy all playing the same deck. So it's the same deck against the same deck, essentially. Yeah. And we all won game one at the same time in top eight. It was hilarious. <laughs> because they, they were like, we were like all talking like, oh, well, this is over. You know, like triple parallel guard. No way Zora can beat that. And we actually all ended up pulling it off. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, how did that top eight game go, though? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was the first finish. I uh, beat Jimmy uh, 2-0. Um, it, was, it was honestly a great game. Uh, game 2 was super close. Uh, game 1, uh, you know, red card. I went, he had Garb out, and I went red card gets us. And he showed me his hand, and it was three energies and an ultra ball. And he's got Garb in play, and I took a knockout on his attacker. So he just picked up his cards, and we went to game 2. Uh, so, yeah, red card. <laughs> Definitely won me my first round of top eight. Uh, and so game two, it's uh, we're like trading. I also, game one, I, I hit the nuts. Like, I, I like double shaman turn one and like held the field blower for turn two. Like, I had it in hand already. So, I was, and like with four Zoras in play and stuff like that. So, I was like, I was like, I'm fine. I'm ready to go, you know? Um, and so game two, uh, I, it was a close game. Um, he was he was up at first, and then I took like, I think I took two good knockouts with Zorak, um, and then he so it got to this point to where he had three prizes left, and I had, I had, two prizes left, yeah, and so, I I took a knockout to get to the two prizes, and I have eleven items in the discard. Um, so during so during my turn, I have four prizes and like something's off, like a lele or a drop is active. So I have eleven items in the discard, or ten. I have ten. So Trash Lynch is hitting for two hundred, and he's got a choice spend on his Trash Lynch garb, so it's hitting for two thirty minus the resistance two ten knockout, right? Yeah. So I go I go field blower the choice band on garb, uh, so it puts me at eleven items. So he's hitting for two twenty or two fifty minus twenty for two thirty. I know, because I got rid of the choice. So now he's hitting for he's hitting for 220 minus 20, 200, which isn't knockout, right? Yeah. So by playing an item, I actually made him not have knockout, which I thought was cool. Uh, and and then I get to him, and he shuffled back choice two choice bands, I think. And so I was like, cool. I was like, this is good. And his hand was dead. He had, like, only energies. And I was like, cool, cool. So if he can't take knockout here, I win, because I kill his only attacker left. Yeah. And so he promotes the garb because I guess he's just hoping on a top deck. Um, and he promotes the garb and attaches choice then. I'm like, wow, he top deck choice then. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And so he takes the knockout on the Zorark. But because uh, I, I also, because I field blower the choice and the float on the garb that was ability locking. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, wow, he knocks out, he, he knocked me out. So I was scared. I was like, I lost. Like, I can't, I can't kill this, because uh, I had no Zoraks left in play. Yeah, he killed my last Zorak. And I was like, I lost. Because uh, he's got a trash lunch and I can't kill it. And so I look at my hand for a minute and I stretch her for a Zora and I bench it. Um, and then I realize his toxin, right? It has no float zone because I feel blower last turn. So I guzma up his toxin and I pass. Because I'm like, so if he can't retreat the Toxin, I can evolve the Zora into Zork next turn and kill anything I want. Yeah. And so I, he, so he's got a Toxin active. I got like a pseudo Wudu with a Floatstone, and he top stacks Sycamore. And I'm like, oh, it's over. He plays Sycamore, still with Floatstone or any any tool. And the next card was Dowsing on top of his deck, so he has to pass back to me. And so I go Zork, DCE, Guzma, Blaylay, one shot, and that's game two. Jeez. So. Yeah, I got pretty lucky with the Guzma stall, honestly. Do you, do you know how many, like, Floatstones left in his deck or no? So his next two cards were Dowsing Floatstone <laughs> on top. So I got, like, I was having a good day with these, my opponents whiffing the tool for game. <laughs> like, <laughs> against Simon and against Jimmy. But, like, when it's your day to run hot, like, it's, I know. it's your day. Yeah. Like, that's what it exactly. is. Exactly. That's what Pokemon is. Like, like, there's definitely luck involved in Pokemon. That's mm -hmm. definitely what it is, like. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, going to top four, everybody took down the Eagle Drampagarb. It's just all Zoroark. But 
how do you feel? Because, like, most of these orcs are, like, fairly similar. There's, I don't think at this point there was, like, Jose was left, so he's the only Glispa Gar, but everybody else was, like, pretty vanilla almost. Right. So, um, I was hyped. I was super hyped. I thought, uh, like, I, I thought that I was about to win. Because uh, <laughs> I thought that in my testing, because we had actually tested the, like, a very similar list as, uh, as Riley against Zorark. And in testing, the four eggs version beat the muck version more often. Like, we even played red card in the muck version, like yeah. Riley did. I think the only difference in the list that we tested was we had two hexes instead of the Acerola that he had. Okay. Um, so it was like muck with two hexes and red card. Uh, and four eggs generally won just because muck makes it to where you're both playing at the same level. But now... But the difference is, is that if the egg player plays right, his early game is much faster because he can propagate and hold basics in his hand to have the knockout going into the muck. Yeah. So, like, he can just have the basics already. So, like, I thought, I, I like, kind of knew what his deck was. And I knew, uh, I, I was pretty sure that Jimmy Taylor didn't play red card. And I felt like red card really gave an advantage in the mirror. Uh, so I thought I was going to win out. Um, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before, before we talk about the finals, what, ha what happened to top four? Yeah, top four was a great series. Yeah, it was the whole took the whole seventy five minutes. Uh, was, it was, uh, was this one streamed? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was streamed. Um, yeah, and I did an interview after. It was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so game one, um, we just kind of go uh, back and forth, and uh, I end up you know, pulling it off because he doesn't have red card and I do. Uh, and so, like, my disruption was much stronger. And then I established hex lock, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was putting up a great fight, though, honestly, because he would just chain Galruses, uh and get there through hex. And that really puts pressure on me because if you're t killing my Zorks and I can't trade into the VSs for hex. Um, and so, but I ended up pulling it off anyways because of red card. Um, and then game two, uh, he goes first. And um, I forgot exactly how that match went, but he ends up beating me because um, I think it's just going first, you know, getting the pseudo down, bridging for the Zoras and attacking first. Like, and then and then he started hexing me too. So like, it's just strong, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so I ended up losing that one uh, just because I couldn't get there, and he did. And then game three, uh, I go. I opened double Zora gets us and I made a rule to myself. I talked about it in the interview that I only play gets us turn one. If I can open, if I can get two Zoras down because it's always, it's just better to bridge it unless you can get two yeah. and it only in certain matchups too. You should, you should get us and mirror match is one of those matchups where if you have double Zora, I think you should get us. And I did. And it really crippled him because he had like, uh, he had like Sycamore in, I think. And like, that's such a weak, Car weak cards to play turn one in the mirror and so there i you know crippled a start uh and then you kept whiffing evolutions and stuff and then i established hex lock the next turn like turn two and then so it was kind of like he he did put up a good fight in that match too like he took prizes and took knockouts and i was like it definitely like he played it as well as he could have and uh but i ended up getting the win there and top four yeah all right so, so uh between top four and finals, do you have like a break for a second, or is it like just straight to finals? Like we like, had, we had like fifteen minutes, so it's kind right. of a short break. So, so, du so during those fifteen minutes, like, w what are you doing? Like, are you freaking uh, out? You're like, yeah, like, I'm talking just, to Jake. You're like, what, yeah, what's I'm happening? Over there. I'm over there with Jake and Brian and Rudy and Herman and <laughs> Carter, and we're just all hyped. We're like freaking out. We're like, oh man, this is up. I'm going to the finals, and yeah, it was it was hype for sure. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was. I mean, I was excited. I was nervous. I was happy to be where I was already. It was just a mix of emotions, you know. <laughs> yeah, I understand completely. So, uh, so for those who didn't watch the uh, the stream, what, what happened? Yeah, so this was a great series. Um, <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> so, game one, uh, game one, he beats me because um, he definitely knows how to play the matchup perfectly he you know hexed me back he that's how you do it by the way guys you beat the deck by hexing it back and hoping that you can like out like get there compared yeah. to the deck and yeah. and like 
I feel, and so he hexed me back. He played perfectly, and he went first. Uh, so like really, and then he has Muck too. So like all that together, it's really just like a 50-50. And I think when you go first in a 50-50, like in this matchup, and you both are playing perfectly, like uh, not not that I played perfectly, but if you're playing pretty well, um, that it's it's just who goes first. And so he he took that match. Uh, game two, I go first. Um, and I uh, I kind of get there, you know, uh, turn one Bridget, um, and I get out a bunch of Zorks, I establish the Hex Lock uh, a little bit, he's still putting up a good fight with uh, Enz and Colorus and Hexing me back, um, but I end up getting there uh, with the lockdown on Hex where he uh, whiffs and I win that game. Um, game three, that's when uh, I mulligan twice, and... He opens, uh, according according to what my friends have told me, he opened like Zora red card computer search Bridget Getsis. So he had so many options, and my hand was like, my hand was like, my opening hand was like Bridget. It was good. It was a good opening hand. It was Bridget something else like Calrus. So it was solid. Um, like I wanted to keep it and compressor I think. And so he he red cards me turn one before I even play cards. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> This isn't a good start to my my twenty five hundred dollar money match, <laughs> but uh, um, and so I draw and it's like computer search and like some other cards I forgot. But I just remember the computer search was my only out, and I was like, cool, okay, computer search. That's a good card to draw for red card. I'll take it. Yeah. And but he's got gets us, and I don't I don't know he's got gets us. Uh, so my friends are telling me they're just all freaking out. They're like, oh, is he gonna play the gets us if he does? He wins. Uh, because I'll have nothing, and but he didn't play Getsus, luckily. He played Bridget, and so <laughs> I got to play the game, uh, which I agree with his play, honestly. Like, he, ha- uh, well, actually, I don't know. He had okay. two Zoras down. So I, I, know, I know why he didn't play the, uh, the Getsus. I listened to his interview. He said he yeah. played against, like, an Archie's player, and he Getsus him, and he got nothing. And he's like, mm-hmm. after this, I'm not going to Getsus blindly turn one. I'm going to use it later in the game. And so I think fair. that's what made him change, is where he gets a, a Blastoise. He hit nothing. It gets a Blastoise. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's totally safe to play Bridget there too. That's but man, with just two, like off. you said, like if I had two Zora and I and I like know red card my opponent down to four, like ooh. I know gets us like it's like <laughs> just go like double Zora red card gets us. It's like the odds of you hit sticking. It's just so likely. Like it's just it's too strong. But yeah, I probably would have done it too. But luckily he didn't for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, and so. So we play a game, and uh, I actually, at one point, I'm up 3-6 in prize cards game three. Because, uh, like, he hits me for, he misses knockout and hits me for into my Zork for 190 one turn. And I'm like, oh boy. Like, I was so excited at this point. And I think what, because at some point, I, I quadruple propagated and benched all my eggs. And I did realize I didn't have Skyfield in play, so it wasn't knockout. Like I miss, I just made a misplay. But the thing, it wasn't a bad, it wasn't that bad because the next optimal play was to still propagate all four eggs back and play hacks and bench one egg. So I was like, okay, I still would have done this play even if I realized that I didn't have sky, right? So I, I wasn't too upset about it. Um, and so I hit into him too to set up the the two shot. Um, and what happens is I think that. I made a strong misplay because he, I attacked with the 190 HP Zorark, and he guzmud up, or he didn't guzmud, he just toad locked me after that. He killed it with a toad lock. Yeah, he ace rolled. And yeah, exactly. He he, he ace rolled the 150. <laughs> uh, um, no, no, he ace rolled. Is another time I hit to him. Uh, but you know what? You know what or something. happened? Yeah. So. I Muck was in play, but I thought Pseudo Wudo was still in effect on his side for some reason. It was because like my Pseudo wasn't in play, so I wasn't thinking about the fact that Muck was shutting off Pseudo. And I thought I could only bench four Pokemon. And so I had an Oricorio. And so I could have benched Ori, Colrist, because uh, after he killed my uh my second Zorark uh with his Zorark, I could have benched Oricorio, Colrist, <laughs> and then hit double puzzle uh and bench Zora. Ben Zora and Shaman and something else and take a knockout and I, it, it would have been it would have been uh, 
like one to four in prizes and like I, it would uh, i remember the announcers were like why he's got orcorio and he's about the course and then they're like he didn't drop the orcorio <laughs> like, yeah i, I thought i thought airport. pseudo i thought pseudo was a play <laughs> i know dude it's because i think i got tilted after i realized skyfield wasn't in play when i benched the eggs and it all just went downhill from there yeah, yeah, yeah. like i just kept i i got my mind wasn't where it should have been and uh so yeah and then like i promoted the the damaged zorark when i could have probably just promoted the other one and not been quaking punched because i had double puzzle in hand and so i could have even if he one shot even if he one shot my uh, zorark gx the fresh one i had uh, I could have double puzzled for Stanton, uh -huh. and then one shot him back, and then I would have been down. It'd have been a one to four in prizes with when I had uh, a Stanton as in the active and a Zork with 190 damage on it. But still, it doesn't matter if it's about to die as long as I can take one prize. Yeah, true. Uh, and also, I considered a play where I like Guzman up Shaman twice, but it was too risky because he could like gets us me and disrupt it or red card hex and disrupt it. And so I ended up doing what I ended up doing what I did, and it didn't work out because I'm bad. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But still, like... All right, so would you blame that more, like, on your just, like, tilted because, like, the Skyfall thing? Or were you more blaming it on, like, tiredness? Or, or, like, what would you say, like, what would you say, like, made you cause the misplay, though? I think I was... It was a mixture of all of that. I, I, think, the, I think the only thing it wasn't was the deck. Like I feel like the deck was perfect. I, I'm I feel like I betrayed the deck by losing the final. <laughs> uh, I think that it deserved the first place, and I just couldn't deliver because I'm an imperfect person. <laughs> the deck is perfect, uh, and so yeah, I was just I was tired. It's, it's a long day. I got tilted because of the Skyfield thing. I mean, stream intimidation. I realize is a real thing. It is a definitely like, a real thing. I. Like, I was definitely <laughs> more nervous in finals of that regionals than I was in top four of Nats. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's just because I, I was playing Mirror, and, like, it's just I knew it was such a skill-intensive matchup, and, like, I was just trying... Because, like, there are totally times, too, where I could have propagated before he hexed, like, the turn before. Because, like, every round during day two, I was, preempt I was like, on point, preemptively propagating. Because, like, if they play hex... It doesn't matter because I still can get there. Yeah. And so I, I, I figured out uh, like what the most optimal play is. Is like if you have four eggs in the discard, you should propagate three, leave one in the discard in case they end you. Because if they end you, then you can still propagate the one egg uh, and trade, trade it. it. Yeah. But if they don't, if they hex you, you have three eggs in the, in your hand. And I didn't do that against him. I don't know why. I, I just I didn't think about it. Um, and I guess it was just you know I was I felt like yeah a combination of everything. Steel. Steel man like second place though. Yeah. Kind of tight. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm <laughs> I'm very I'm still very happy and proud of myself with yeah. the second place. Like I'm I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I'm I'm looking at what I could have done better, you know? No, I, I completely understand. Like that's that's what everybody does. At least like you reflect and you notice and you like see that kind of stuff, which is like good to, for people to notice, like like hey, if I would have done XYZ, like holy god, could have been regional champion like <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> also it helps when you have brian and jake and re-watching the video 20 times a day and say i say you should have been regional champion what's wrong with you like why did you do this <laughs> <laughs> that's all my group chat was like the first three days after the regionals is like i said why are you so bad like you, you could have like, done it like yeah but who get, who still got second place <laughs> yeah i know right i know like you guys can even make day two. Shut up. Oh, dang. <laughs> got him. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but still, nah. congratulations, sir. That, it's still fantastic. I don't care. It's whatever, nah. whatever Jake and Brian say, it's still. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm just joking, too. I owe all of my success to them. They definitely helped me so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, sure. they, I couldn't have done it without them. All right. But uh, I got some questions. About you. I, not a lot of questions. I know we kind of talked about beforehand. You played, like, the 3-1 split, like, the three paralyzing gaze. And the one, uh, what's it, what's that called? Um, lunge. Lunge, yeah, yeah. And I know I had this big debate on my channel where, like, if you can't find the Paralyzed Gaze ones, don't worry about it. Don't stress, just play whatever. But you instead were like, I'm just going to play both of them. I hate right. everybody. I'm just going to make my <laughs> cringe. So why the split? Yeah, so, I mean, three Paralyzing Gaze. Paralyzing Gaze is just good. Of course, it's, like, 
the most conventional, I think, like uh, efficient conventional, just because you can paralyze them in situations where you need to. Uh, and like, if you have, there's definitely offered, there's definitely like situations where you actually want to go for that turn one. Like say, for example, you have three DCs in your hand. Well, why not just use one of them to try to prevent them from taking the first prize, you know? Uh, and so that's why I played three, just because there's just, it's better to have that opportunity, like compared to just doing 30 turn one um, with like lunge. Now I played the one lunge. Um, so, because if you don't play one lunge, and you're playing against Night March, and they open Lone Pumpkaboo, and you go second, and they don't have anything else but the one Pumpkaboo, there is no way for you to win the game. It's impossible for you to win the game turn one, I mean, like, to win on that turn. Yeah. But if you play one lunge, there is a chance that you just <laughs> win the game right there. So that's the idea behind one lunge. Like, I will, I would like to take my chances against Night March turn one from no chance to some chance, you know? So, yeah, that was my logic. And also, you know, it's useful if they start egg or... But, like, Shaman can kill an egg, and Shaman can kill a Joltic. But still, it's there in, in the situations where you need to do that. Okay. I can see that for sure. Uh, let's see. Now, <clears throat> there's also, like, the big debate on, like, Toad, Karen versus Oracorio. How? Why did you decide to go with, like, the Oracorio instead of the Toad Karen kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, I talked to Kian about this. Um, uh, Kian also helped me uh, with some ideas. Um, and I and they took some of the ideas from this deck, too. They didn't play the same 60, but they played, like, three eggs, two hex. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but he, uh, I talked to him about it, and um, we had decided that because Night March is we're swapping to 4-3 Zorak or 3-3 Zorak, that, because uh, initially I had one Hex in the deck, and no Oricorio, and then Toad Karen. So those were the two changes. Uh, and so we decided that because they were playing so many Zoraks, Toad Karen isn't nearly as effective as it used to be, because they'll just hit you with a, a Zorak, or, you know, they'll just trade three times, discard three Night Marchers, and then, like, the next turn, they're back to where they were, even though you're, you're item-locking item locking them the whole time. Uh, so, so we decided to cut Toad Karen for Oricorio Hex. Because we thought, you know, if they're playing 4-3 Zork, playing double Hex will just shut that Zork draw engine down. And Oricorio can snipe around the Zorks to get to the Night Marchers. True. And then, so it just keeps the Night Marchers out. Or if they ever get, like... I, one thing we always like to do in testing was, like... When the Night March player attacks with Mar Shadow, you go, okay, cool, Oricorio Hex, and you kill all their Night Marchers on the bench, and they just have like a, a Mar Shadow there that can't do anything, <laughs> and you're like, good game, you know? Uh, but That's so good. <laughs> yeah. So that was the that was the change we made from we we dropped Toad Karen or for Oricorio Hex. I was hoping you'd say that you played Oricorio, Oricorio to beat Prime Groudon, but you didn't say that. So that's okay, that that that's an added benefit. <laughs> I, we actually that was one thing too. I, I just didn't care about the Groudon matchup to be honest. Like I didn't I didn't expect to play against it too many times. Uh, but it was I did know I did look at that and I was like, oh hey, yeah, Oricorio. Oricorio helps in the Vesper Quinzelork matchup too. I used it round oh, two yeah. for that. So I I think I actually would have lost if I didn't have Oricorio. Um, and it, yeah, if I played against a Groudon, it breaks Sashes, yeah. Sashes, which is great. Yeah, <laughs> it's super great. All right, all right. So uh, the next kind of debate. Uh, Ooh, wait, wait. Okay, good, one good, more thing. Good, go. Uh, yeah. So another cool thing about Oricorio that we realized is that in Mirror, when your opponent benches all the eggs, you can just completely mess up the prize exchange <laughs> by retreating to Ori and taking two prizes because they like. I realized something about this deck. It always has so many discard Pokemon in the discard pile. Yeah. Like, I, and compared to most decks in the format, like easily six. You know, late game, like having ten in the discard isn't even that surprising. So, yeah. I saw last okay. game of testing. I'm playing against a, a Glisspod per person, and they're like, "You dropped two eggs last turn. I win." And I'm like, "Oh no, don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from. Um. But yeah, I should have asked this earlier when we talking about Pokemon. Uh, the next kind of big, I guess, debate is like you played the Zark Mind Jack instead of the Foul Play one. Why? Why? Why would try? To, why do we choose one of the over the other? Yeah, so I got I got really technical uh, with Jake about this because uh, we were talking about it and he was asking why why don't we just play Foul Play? Uh, and this is this is my reasoning. I have like a very specific reasoning. Um, so 
this deck, in essence, is a lock deck to me. Mm-hmm. It's it's a deck that you play hex every turn. And the problem with foul play, in my opinion, uh, is that it's too fragile for a lock deck to be an attacker. Because you only take a knockout with foul play when you have a full bench, a DC, and a choice against other Zoraks. Uh, right? So you have to have, like, you know, the works. Like, all of the... Not, it's not, like, a lot for the deck, but it's all of it. You know, it's a lot of resources uh, to take the full knockout. And it's so fragile because it gets killed... It gets returned with only 100 damage. And, yeah, it's a one-prizer, but I I felt like I would rather attack with a GX that can take a hit under... Because it's hard for your opponent to get there under Hexlock. So I'd rather... I'd, I valued the HP... And all that over. So I felt like foul play was just like a worse Zorak GX in most situations. Uh, and the difference between foul play and mind jack in that sense, because mind jack is also a low HP Zorak, that's a one prizer. The, the difference though is that mind jack takes very little resources. It doesn't matter how many Smash Pokemon you have, all you need is the Zorak and the DC, and then you're return killing Zoraks when they kill you back. So it's a, you're, so I, and so pretty much to sum it up, foul play in my opinion trades a lot of resources on your end for little resources on your opponent's end. While Mind Jack trades little resources on your end for a lot of resources on your opponent's end. So that's my explanation. There you go. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. There you go. All right. So um, I think also this is like the only final without like a second or a juniper, like since it's been printed, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I read that. I, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Glad to be a part of that. <laughs> Not really a question. Just stay, I was looking at your list, and I was like, because I even played one Sycamore in my deck. I'm yeah. like, right, we're playing one Sycamore just in case something crazy happens turn one. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, like, there was one okay. situ- Yeah, there's one situation during the tournament where I felt like Sycamore would have been the best supporter, but it was only one time. Uh and, like, I just played in instead, and it worked out fine. So, like, I didn't really miss it. And testing, we had one, uh, for, like, weeks ago, and we cut it. Because we realized, like, Sycamore, like, this deck wants to use all four of its puzzles. And, like, when you play Sycamore, you risk, like, hands where you can't do that. You risk hands, like, where you open, like, double via Sycamore. Like, it's just such, like, like, pretty much we figured out how this deck works. Turn one, you go Bridget. Turn two... If you have the nuts, you go triple trade hex. And if you don't have the nuts, you go call risk to get the nuts. And then turn three and after, you just play hex every turn. And so Sycamore no, didn't really fit in that plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get that for sure. All right. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're done, like, talking about the deck. Like, I think we've talked about everything. I guess my one question is, if you were to try to counter this deck outside of Waylord, do you think there's a deck that, like, just every single time it beats it? Huh. Um... I mean, that's the question, right? In, in the next expanded tournament, I mean, right. I mean, of course, we'll have the new whatever Ultra Prism set, but I don't see anything that's like really bad towards a this exactly. I, I, that's what I've that's what I've seen as well. Um, I think the only th- that's that's the thing about this deck is that it play it to me it plays the game in a different way that it doesn't matter about what Pokemon you have down it just stops you from playing the game like you just go red card hex and then you they it doesn't really matter what cards they have in their deck like because they can't get to them so yeah, yeah true uh but i think i've been testing this a little bit and toad zork with red card and enhanced hammers so it's essentially the same deck with more toads uh <laughs> is actually pretty effective it's not like Oh, it beats it, you know. It doesn't yeah. just beat it because we this deck plays Ranger, but it's it's not bad. And I maybe I'm just testing that because I got beat by Toad in the finals, kind of. So I'm still <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's the only thing that can beat me. All right, let's test it. But uh, yeah, I mean, Wales Wales beats it. Uh, yeah, and maybe been outside of Wales, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Toad, I would say Toad Zork is something that people should be testing to see if they can uh, beat the matchup with that. And expanded. There we go. Uh, but I mean, next expand is like I don't even know. It's uh, Costa Mesa. Okay, yeah, I, I it had to be and a California parks. thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, also a cool a cool card that's good against Zork is Cyrus in the new set. Because like, if you can like, 
Cyrus them and like uh Like, what are you even playing in? Like, it's... <laughs> Yeah, you playing Toad. <laughs> I guess it's it. You just like, I know, I'm playing Toad Cyrus with Zork. Because yeah. oh, yeah. uh, it can like, yeah, I can definitely get, you can force Can't wait until March now. This is going to be so much fun. Thank you, Yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. I'm sorry about the red card hex format. That's going to be custom SF. I apologize. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, let's say, let's say Pokemon takes like the drastic like measure and they ban a card. What's the one card you think they banned to like fix it? Do they ban? Do they ban the hex? Do they ban the Zork? Do they ban the red card? Like, which one card would like fix it all? I don't think Pokemon will ban a card, but if no, they I'm not did, saying Pokemon will. Yeah. I'm just saying like if there's one if card they, that you didn't have, if they did, it would have to be either. I think I think they should ban Egg, but I don't think that's what they're gonna ban. I think if they did ban something, it'd be Compressor. But I think banning egg would fix a lot of things. Because then trade becomes a matter of resource management. And you can't just build 20 card hands like I did <laughs> most of the rounds. Like, it's just ridiculous that you could, like, like, and also it's so broken going compressor, discard three eggs, and then turn two getting there so easily. Because I have three eggs in the discard. Like, yeah. one card is, like, three Pokemon. So, like, yeah, compressor or egg. I think Egg would be most balanced, though, because some decks need Compressor. True. Like, I marked. There we go. Maybe maybe we'll see. I'm just saying, Pokemon's, like, 100% not going to ban a card. Yeah. Like, it's, that's way too drastic. Like, like, all right, guys, we need, whoa, whoa, come down there, you know? <laughs> It'd be hilarious if, like, in a week we see an Egg ban. I'll be like, a rip. I'm like, sorry. Well, we were watching an interview on Team Fisher's YouTube channel, and uh, this, uh, this stupid guy made a great point here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'd be pretty sad if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So let let's stop, let's stop talking about expanded. I know the answer is probably I have no idea or no. Have you like even somewhat like thought of Ultra Prism set for standard stuff? Uh, a little bit actually. Um, I like you know just uh, my group chat that people throwing around ideas. Um. You know, just to recover from this whole hex being hex lock with red card being broken thing, uh, Glaceon is an ability lock card, and I think ability lock's pretty broken. So I'm testing Glaceon with red card, and <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. There's things that beat it. Like it's weak to metal, and metal's super strong. Like uh, Dialga GX's uh, GX work, and like skip your opponent's turn and do 180 with a choice is broken. That's ridiculous. I'm just going to do a 180, uh, then I'm going to send a, a Necrozma and just do 220 to you real quick. Exactly. <laughs> it's insane. Um, yeah, that's, that's broken. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, Leafeon is cute with its GX because you, uh, you can... I think it's cool because uh, you can like bench all, the, bench all the Rowlets, GX, get out Dark Tricks and then evolve to uh, Decidueye, so it makes Decidueye possibly play playable again. Also, there's the supporter that says uh, heal 80 damage from a Pokemon with grass energies on it, and then Leafeon's got an ability that heals 50. Mm -hmm. And so, you can, like, you can, like, if you can play against a deck that can't one-shot you, you can, like, put two float stones on Leafeons, and every time they hit you, just go ability, heal Leafeon, retreat, ability, heal Leafeon, Play supporter, heal eighty, so you heal one hundred and eighty damage in one turn. So they, it never dies if they can't one shot you. I yeah, think that's gonna, funny. We're just gonna draw into those the, those guys. Yeah, that's gonna be easy draws. We got. We got <laughs> yeah. look, like, I know this is a Zorg, but look, we're not gonna have twenty card hands. Is <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean Glaceon. I think Glaceon will be good for like legitimately good. Yeah. All right, well, there we go. Are you gonna Collinsville or no? Uh, I'm not doing Collinsville. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. It's got to focus on school for a bit. I understand that completely. Uh, I'll be at Costa Mesa, though. Costa Mesa. Is, awesome. is yeah. that, like, the next, next, like, one after that, or no? You don't, you don't have an idea? I think it's in March. It's in, it's, like, March. Something. There's, like, three regionals happen in March. I'm going to two in March. So I know there's, oh, yeah. there's uh, Charlotte yeah. and Portland. Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to Costa Mesa and Portland. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, like, I'm at this, like, weird spot where I'm, like, in the low twenties on the ranking system, and I'm not going to Australia, so like it's like very unlikely that I can like get into top sixteen at this point since I'm not going to Australia. So 
Uh, I'm just like, but I, I yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just like, you know, if I get a second out of regionals again, then maybe I can <laughs> top 16. What is but, like another 170? Is it 150 or 175? Once, it's 160. 160. Actually. Yeah, I know. Weird, sure, right? Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Thanks, but, yeah. Ron, we'll do 30. <laughs> we'll do 32 points at 160 and jump to 200. Yeah. Right. It's weird. Um, but yeah, I'm sitting at, I'm sitting at 480 now. So oh, I have my invite. That's an invite, sir. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I don't know. That's pretty much it. I mean, Ultra Prism, like you said, Glaceon seems good. I don't think you're testing too much since Collinsville. You're not going to Collinsville, so you probably don't yeah. care too much. I'm honestly looking at Expanded more than yeah, Standard. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I'd be thinking, too. Like, I, have like, a, I, I have a uh, cup this weekend, but I'm, it's not new set. So. And is it just... Expanded or Standard? It's standard, oh, so who cares? I'm just I'm just playing like in Rock Zora. Yeah, why not? It's the best. It's the best deck <laughs> yeah. for a reason. Like, why would yeah. you not? All right. Well, I guess that's pretty much all I got to say. Do you have anything else to say? Any shout outs? Uh, any cool stuff you want to say? Uh, yeah, I just uh, I want to say thank you again to my group, uh, to the guys and um, all all my hexes live in Texas. That's what we named the group chat. Uh, Thank you to all those guys. Uh, <laughs> it, can I plug myself? Yeah, anyway, do, do uh, yeah, fo- it. Follow me on Twitter at uh, the Isaiah W. And uh, add me as a friend on Facebook. Also, I uh, Twitch stream sometimes if you want to watch and uh, learn. Uh, at, it's also the Isaiah W. So, yeah. There we go. And I'll have links down below in, in just in case you can't spell. So. Yeah, yeah. And add them on Facebook. I've never heard anybody shut out their Facebook before. But there we <laughs> yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Isaiah Williams. You got it. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Well, there we go. Isaiah, thank you so much for this interview. Uh, congrats again on second. Guys, like I said, this might be one of the last interviews for a very long time. It is very hard to set these up. You know, Isaiah, it's uh, I work some crazy hours. And luckily, yeah. we, got, we yeah. got very lucky. I was like, are you ready? He's it like, I'm free out. right now. Like, Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. It worked out well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank no you. problem, guys. But guys, um, there we go. Isaiah, congratulations. Hopefully one day you'll win. Maybe that way people won't forget about you again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. Yeah, guys. All right. But there we go. Let me know if you have any suggestions for this interview. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. You learned something new about Expanded. I know it's still, it's, it's busted. And it's definitely going to be ugly if you're going to, what, Costa, what's Costa Mesa? Yep, Costa Mesa. Is it Anaheim? Spot. Yeah, it's near. It's very close to Anaheim. It's Anaheim. Yeah. Sure, it's Anaheim. I'm calling yeah. it Anaheim. Like, that's okay. like, what it was. Okay. You said Costa Mesa, and I was like, there's a what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. It's like when you're okay. like, I'm going to Collinsville. You're like, St. Louis? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's the same thing, essentially. <laughs> All right, guys. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll leave links to Isaiah's uh, plugs, like he said, down below. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye. Bye, guys.